flatten ears to ground, curve shoulder into the hollow of bones of earth beneath you. I'm Reagan, and today we're spending one hour with Andrew Matters of William Street Strikers. So, Andrew, we're obviously both music fans yep. from way back. It's yep. how we met. It's yep. why you're here. And I would love to know a little bit about your early influences. I guess one of my first influences uh, would be Billie Holiday. Now, um, that's mainly because uh, my grandmother and grandfather worked in big bands and that's what they did for a living, you know, when the RSLs were sort of really, really working. Yeah, yeah. So I got to see a lot of big bands when I grew up. And Billie Holiday, um, I think the first time I heard her singing, it was just something in her voice. I don't, I can't really describe it, but it's similar to Frank Sinatra. It's not a technically perfect voice, but it has a high emotional quota. So, you know, when she sings a song, you can really feel what she's singing. You know, it's almost like you're looking at her and she elicits emotion. Um, And I was to find out later on that, yeah, she only has one, one and a half octaves which is a quite a small range men usually only have one and a half octaves so she didn't have a lot of range but she was still able to put across any song and just do it with such yeah uh, just such warmth and yeah just really tell the story Mm. so i liked her for that reason um Also, as I got older, when um, I started learning about her struggles and it comes down to sort of like governments like repressing artists because they Mm. see them as dangerous and the fact that she was hounded down by, you know, the FBI, like Lenny Bruce and and a lot of those people until she died at, I think she was only about 42 with about 70 cents in the bank. Um, So she was, yeah, basically, yeah, hounded down to her death so and that strikes a chord you relate to it i i do absolutely absolutely because i think anybody who well let's say most people who have something to say have demons and and i think in the music industry i mean you're going to be exposed to drugs that's just one of the things and i don't think there'd be a musician alive that wouldn't have come across that type of thing so yeah that that type of discrimination and um criminalization of what really is a disease i suppose that made me relate to a more as an adult just through probably just my own getting my own fingers burnt a little bit along those lines um and yeah i just um in the end i guess it also just comes back to yeah just that one flower in the hair that simple voice and just yeah the way she sang yeah yeah so what song best represents billy holiday for you strange fruit i think there are lots of other songs you could choose from but that was the gutsiest song to do at the time you know with all of the jim crow laws that were happening in the states at that particular time to put out a song with such you know um graphic lyrics and to know that it could quite possibly wreck your career, which it did, and that's what got everybody against her in the establishment, I just think was such a brave move. But the fact also is she grew up watching the bulging eyes and people hanging over sycamore trees and all of that stuff. And so, yeah, I just think it's probably one of the bravest moves by somebody who had everything to lose and nothing to gain. She stood up from her point of privilege and put everything on the line. So that's that's why I've chose that song. Um, bulging eyes and people hanging over sycamore trees. It basically describes you know, somebody hanging and how the you know the eyes would bulge and the blood would go down onto the flowers underneath the sycamore trees. That's powerful. It's very very powerful, and I think it is. Yeah, it is in the Library of America in um, whatever their cultural library's name is. I can't recall it at the moment. But, yeah, it's been recognised in, 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 in that league. So, yeah, very important song of the 20th century. Amazing influence. Um, so what has Billie Holiday taught you about being an artist? I think what she has taught me as um, a singer is to not worry about perfection of uh of notes worry about the perfection of delivery and it really has affected the way i record because 
I can't say I've never used it, but I hate auto-tune. I would rather have something with a little bit more humanity, a wavering baritone or something that might be a little bit pitchy than that sort of, you know, that, 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 yeah, it sounds so obvious to me, maybe because I listen to it, but I still think, you know, humans want to hear some humanity coming out of music and I think that's why some music stands the test of time because it hasn't been micromanaged and mastered into such a state of perfection that it can often sound like um, elevator music. So I think that's what she taught me as a vocalist. So this is Strange Fruit by Billie Holiday. Yeah. 